Alright guys, so the first episode of Season 4 of The Flash dropped earlier this week, and if you follow me on Twitter, bring back them shameless plugs by the way, you'll already know I thought the episode was pretty solid. The effects were great, the writing was great, most of the characters were great. I mean, I know a lot of people were saying that this episode is kind of like the show going back to the first season, like it's funny and it has action and all that stuff, but I don't know if that description really plays up how much better this season is compared to the last one. I like to think that this first episode of Season 4 is like Season 1 on steroids, like they took everything that originally made The Flash a good show, put a ton more energy into it and crammed it into that space left behind by the colossal meh known as season 3. So with that having been said, I want to talk about the episode a little bit and kind of get into some of the easter eggs and the references peppered in throughout the episode. Just a quick note before I do though, obviously I'm going to be getting into some detail about an episode that just recently came out, so beware of spoilers. Anyway, with that having been said, let's get into the video. So the episode revolves around Team Kid Flash slash Team Vibe trying to maintain order in Central City six months after Barry went into the Speed Force in the season 3 finale. They generally suck at it though, and that, coupled with the arrival of a new villain that Sisko later dubs the Samuroid, leads to most of them deciding to rescue Barry from the Speed Force. I say most because even though Sisko is able to bring back a ready-to-work Caitlyn, who's been working at a dive bar this whole time and can turn into Killer Frost like the Hulk, Iris is a major buzzkill and doesn't even want to try to bring Barry back, because why would she? Of course everybody tries anyway though, and of course it works out, but Barry's apparently crazy and babbling a bunch of nonsense. Iris the buzzkill decides to kill two birds with one stone and allows herself to be kidnapped by the Samuroid helping Barry get his sanity back, who then destroys the Samuroid. Then we get to see the Thinker, who apparently wanted Barry out of the Speed Force for some reason or another, they haven't really explained it yet. He says a catchphrase, roll credits. So to start off, I'm glad there were so many connections from Season 1, like we had the return of Peekaboo, Barry's favorite Lady Gaga song, Run Iris Run. It gives the show a nice bit of continuity, you know, some fun throwbacks and all that. I'm also glad that the show actually showed some repercussions from the Season 3 finale, like it could have been really, really easy for the writers to just show the team casually dealing with all these threats in Central City, and everybody's cool but kind of sad, then they just have Barry pop up randomly, like they turn it into this big mystery or whatever like all the other seasons had, but they didn't. The writers actually bothered making everything a process, like trying to free Barry, trying to take care of the crime rate, showing how everybody was feeling, all that stuff. That having been said, there are some issues here. I'm not really a huge fan about how unaffected the city seemed to be by Barry's disappearance, like nobody really seemed to care that the Flash was gone for six months, and barely anybody seemed to care about Barry being gone. Yeah, Joe mentioned that the CCPD wanted to replace him, but that's it? There's nobody else that would notice or care if Barry or the Flash are gone? None of the villains, in six months, bothered to even ask about the Flash? That having been said, I also don't like how they brought back Barry. Like, I think it was glossed over a little too easily, Cisco just brought out some science-sounding mumbo-jumbo and shot a little red ball and that was it. I guess trying to leave the Speed Force really wasn't as big a deal as everybody made it out to be. But at least we have his insanity to play around with, right? That sounds kinda cool. Nope, that's all gone by the end of the episode. Seriously? The writers can't even give us a hint that it'll be explored later. I mean, I assume it will, since Barry's gibberish clearly means something, but still. I wish the writers would have at least let us know that it's on their mind, like tack on a reference or a hint or something. I think what bugs me more though is the fact that Barry coming back just kinda happened. I know Barry's supposed to be the main character he had to get out eventually, but couldn't we have had more of the episode devoted to Wally and Sisko running around doing stuff? That having been said, I do really think the writing in this first episode was some of the best we've gotten out of the show in a while. All the characters feel like they've actually grown since they watched Barry disappear into the Speed Force, and Barry really does seem like a hopeless crazy person after he gets back to Central City, so it actually feels kinda cool when he starts making sense again, even if it happens a little too quickly. Granted, some of that is because all the actors were giving really good performances this time around, but I feel like the writers deserve some props for giving them a lot of good material to work with. And on top of that, I really loved the humor in this episode. I think my favorite part was when Sisko manages to translate Barry's gibberish writing into English, and he comes up with a phrase Team Flash really wasn't expecting. It's loading. Come on, loading, 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 and it says, this house is bitchin'. Yeah, it gets funnier every time I see it. That having been said, I still hate how Iris is written. I think Candace Patton is a decent enough actress she could do something else other than act like a constant bitch every single episode. I mean, why write her like that? Why not just give her some space to be a little like she was in season one? You know, Iris can be headstrong and take charge, but why can't she be a little bit more fun and carefree while she's doing it? It doesn't make any sense. Overall though, I really like this episode. I gotta give it a 4.5 out of 5. Yeah, there's a couple things I'm not too sure about just yet. Some of the writing 
writing was a little wonky and there was a couple but why though moments, but considering that this is the start of a new season, especially one that's coming off a really disappointing one, season 4 of The Flash is starting out pretty strongly. Alright, so now that we've gone through the review, I want to run through some of my favorite easter eggs and references from the episode. The first one is when Barry's in the middle of rambling and he says, we're gonna need more diapers. That's a huge reference to the twins he and Iris have in the comics, who eventually become superheroes known as the Tornado Twins. Skipping back to Barry's rambling just after getting out of the Speed Force, he starts babbling about how he's innocent and he didn't kill anybody, which sounds like a reference to that vision he had back in Season 1 when he was in jail. Both of these things are definitely references to the story in the comics called The Trial of the Flash, where Barry had to go on trial after killing the Reverse Flash during a fight. There's also a couple different iconic catchphrases that Cisco mentions while trying to figure out the meaning behind the symbols Barry's writing. Once he thinks he's got the translation figured out, he says Great Caesar's Ghost and Excelsior, catchphrases from Daily Planet editor Perry White and Marvel Comics legend Stan Lee, respectively. There's also another catchphrase reference from Caitlin as she's turning into Killer Frost when she says, Don't make me frosty, you wouldn't like me when I'm frosty. All the Marvel fans out there should remember that that's a reference to the Hulk show from the 1970s, starring Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno. Next up is a reference to the cover of The Flash, number 181, which we got just after Wally's finished losing to the Samuroid. Speaking of, the robot goes through a few nicknames over the course of the episode, including Kurosawa, a reference to the Japanese film director slash screenwriter Akira Kurosawa, and Samurai Jackass, a reference to the Samurai Jack cartoon. Now I'm sure I missed a couple of references, so if there's one I didn't mention here, let me know in the comments down below. But anyways guys, that's my take on the very first episode of Season 4 of The Flash. If you guys liked this video, you liked all the stuff I talked about, then go ahead and let me know in the comments as usual. And don't forget to also let me know what you thought about The Flash Reborn. Did you think it was good? Did you think it was bad? Who's your favorite character? You know, stuff like that. And with that, I will see you all next time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to click that like button, maybe leave me a comment while you're at it, and go ahead and click that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to check out any of my social media pages. I've got a Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. All those links are going to be in the description below. And I've also got my last video right there in the middle of your screen. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and click it, check it out. All right, and I will see you all next time.